I'm Shelley McGuire. I'm from the University of Idaho, where I'm a professor of nutrition, and I've been studying milk composition and breastfeeding for over three decades. And I'm really excited today to tell you a little bit about one of my favorite topics, which is the human milk microbiome. So we'll begin by um, just talking about what is a microbiome? What is the milk microbiome? And by the end of today's little talk, I would like to give you some information about whether and how we think the milk microbiome might be related to maternal and infant health. So let's just start with a brief introduction of what a microbiome is. The term, the human microbiome, refers to an aggregate of all the microbiota that reside on or within human tissues and fluids. So this includes all the bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Most of these bacteria, viruses, and fungi reside in the intestine, but they're also throughout the body, including, as it turns out, in breast milk and in the breast itself. We think there are over a trillion microbes in the body and that these are there for a purpose. Um, many of them provide benefit. For example, they help in digestion, they help fight off pathogens, and some of them even produce vitamins. However, they can result in illness when there is an imbalance or some sort of pathogen in those microbes. So that is what we mean by the milk or the microbiome in general, but let's switch gears now and talk about the milk microbiome. And we'll start off by just recognizing that for years we've thought that milk was sterile. In other words, that it had no microbiome. And you might be wondering um, why that is. Why did we used to think that milk was sterile and now we think it has a microbiome? Well, this whole finding really has to do with what we call a paradigm shift in science. And a paradigm shift occurs when there's a fundamental change in what we know about something, and in this case, the microbiome. And in this case, uh, that change in what we know has to do with technology in a way that scientists can look at the microbiome. This is a lot like this picture that I like to show, where if you look at this picture one way, it looks like a beautiful woman, whereas if you look at it in a different way, it actually looks like an old woman. This is a great example of a paradigm shift and basically what has happened in the world of milk microbiome. So how specifically did this happen? How did this paradigm shift happen? Well, it's actually quite simple. In the old days, for us to understand a microbiome of a particular fluid, we would have to grow the microbes on a Petri dish in culture. But in the last couple of decades, scientists have learned to actually identify bacteria by looking at and sequencing the DNA. So we don't have to grow the, the microbes anymore. So this was a really important paradigm shift in all of science. It resulted in the Human Microbiome Project, which um, started in 2007, and its goal was to actually identify all the microbes in the body in the different parts of the body. However, because this big project, which has yielded a lot of information, was launched in 2007, milk was not included in the milk or in the human microbiome project because at that point we thought that milk was sterile. However, this really all changed in about 2010, and I'm happy to say that our lab had a lot to do with that change um, in terms of studying the human microbiome. In, in about 2010, we were actually studying um, the effect of dietary supplements on cells in milk, so immune cells in milk. And in this project, we were collecting milk and we were looking at it under the microscope to look at the types of cells. We were also sending the milk to a laboratory and they were culturing the milk to see if any microbes were growing. And the interesting thing is that when they cultured the milk, they found that no bacteria grew. However, when we looked at the milk under the microscope, we actually saw bacteria. So we knew that there was something that we needed to look into further, and we actually had a very serendipitous finding that there was indeed a milk microbiome, because what we were doing is we were using these new techniques to study that. So in a nutshell, we studied 16 healthy women. Uh, we collected three milk samples per woman. We used these new molecular methods where we were looking at the DNA. And what we found was that all the milk samples contained a very rich bacterial community. 
There was great variation amongst women, but each woman had what we called a bacterial fingerprint in her milk. In other words, the bacteria types in, um, in a woman's milk samples was pretty consistent over time. This is a figure that just shows, uh, vi visually shows these three main outcomes. And you can see on here that there are 16 women that we studied. Each woman had three milk samples, so three bars. And just by looking at these pictures, you can see that the colors in those bars are quite different across women. However, if you look at the three bars for each woman, the colors are relatively similar. And those colors represent the different types of bacteria that are in the milk. So we were very excited about this finding and published it in 2011. This paper really launched a new area of scientific research, which we've been very engaged in since then. So you may be wondering, where do these microbes come from? How do they get into milk? And it turns out that we think that they're coming from at least two different, uh, two different locations. First of all, we believe that the, some of the bacteria are actually coming from the infant's mouth. And we've learned from ultrasound images that when a baby suckles, not only does the milk go into the baby's mouth, but everything in the baby's mouth goes back into the, into the breast. So this is one, we believe, uh, origin of the milk microbiome. We call this retrograde inoculation, or in our lab, we call it baby backwash. We also believe that there are bacteria that are coming to the mammary gland from the maternal digestive system. So gut bacteria are actually being trafficked from the mom's intestines to her mammary gland, and we call this the enteromammary pathway. So when we discovered that milk had a microbiome in around 2010, other researchers around the world started to look at this as well. And one thing that we found very quickly is that researchers in Finland and, and Spain were finding different milk microbiomes. And these are very good scientists. And we started putting our heads together and asked, uh, were these differences real? Are there really different milk microbiomes around the world or were they due to different milk collection and analysis methods? So to tackle that, we conducted a large interdisciplinary study with some of these scientists around the world. We called this the INSPIRE study. And we tested the hypothesis that normal milk microbiome actually does vary around the world. And to do that, we studied women and their babies in 11 different locations, two locations in Ethiopia and the Gambia, two locations in the United States, and then one location each in Ghana, Kenya, Peru, Spain, and Sweden. We collected milk samples from 413 relatively healthy moms and babies who were one to three months postpartum. And important to this study, we standardized how we collected the milk and how we analyzed the milk so that if we found differences, we would know for sure that they were real. So um, in a nutshell, some of the conclusions from this study are shown on this slide which show all the different populations and these stacked bar charts, again, like I showed you before, um, showing the different bacterial communities depicted here in just different colors. And you can see for sure that there are differences around the world as we had hypothesized. And there's some interesting things I wanna point out here. For example, in rural Ethiopia, the main bacterium in milk was one called rhizobium. And rhizobium, we typically think of as being a soil bacterium. So it was very interesting to us that it showed up in the milk produced in this country. But it turns out that one of the staple food products in rural Ethiopia is something called NSAT, which they ferment in the ground. So it really isn't too surprising in the end that soil bacteria would show up in the milk in this location. Another interesting finding was in Ghana, where we found a lot of lactobacillus, which we would expect to be in milk, but it's usually in very low proportions, but it was in a relatively high proportion in Ghana. And we also find, found relatively high amounts of Klebsiella, which is something we typically think of as being a pathogen. However, here the women were healthy and the babies were healthy, so the Klebsiella wasn't causing a problem at all. Since then, we and other groups around the world have um, identified a lot of other factors that appear to be related to this wide variation in milk microbiome that we see amongst women. For example, the types of immune cells in milk are related to variation in milk microbiome. So is maternal age, time postpartum, 
the number of children a woman has had, whether she is exclusively breastfeeding, even her genetics, her dietary patterns, and even childcare uh, patterns, which I want to talk a little bit more about because I find this just fascinating that childcare patterns might perhaps influence the milk microbiome. And we have studied this actually in a couple of locations, but one that I just want to talk a little bit about is a study that we did in the Central African Republic with colleagues uh, at Washington State University, Dr. Courtney Meehan ran the study. And Courtney has been studying moms and babies in the Central African Republic for a very long time. She's interested in, in, in child rearing patterns and family dynamics and social networks. And she was able to go to the Central African Republic and study some very traditional hunter gatherers, collect milk samples from them and bring them back to the United States where we analyze them in our lab. And at the same time, she was able to collect very, very detailed data on childcare patterns and for example, how many people were taking care of each infant. And interestingly, we found that the milk microbiome diversity, in other words, the number of bacteria in a woman's milk was related to how many people cared for her infant, which I find just fascinating. This might be the first example of where we have variation in childcare patterns being related to variation in milk composition. And our hypothesis to explain this was that an infant who is exposed to multiple caregivers is therefore also exposed to more environmental microbes that those caregivers bring with them. That then would increase the infant's oral microbiome richness and therefore increase the milk microbiome rich richness via that baby backwash that I talked about previously. So the real question is, so what? We now know that there's a milk microbiome but how might it be related to maternal and infant health? Well, one thing that we think is really important is that data from our lab and other labs is starting to show very, very convincingly that variation in the milk microbiome is highly related to variation in the infant's stool microbiome. And we know that that stool microbiome is setting a, a baby up for lifelong health or even increased risk for certain diseases later in life. So we really wonder if we can optimize the infant's microbiome by altering his or her mother's milk microbiome, and can we do that via diet or environmental exposures or maybe even social networks or childcare patterns? We also have really good data that's emerging from many labs around the world that suggests that the milk microbiome might, related, might be related to the mother's breast health. For example, there are many studies now that show that different microbiomes are present in cancerous versus healthy breast tissue. Now we need to figure out if the cancer is changing the microbiome or if the microbiome is actually altering the risk of cancer. So it's a chicken or an egg issue and we have a lot of questions still to answer there. We also have some really interesting uh, data suggesting that women who take particular probiotic supplements might um, change their risk for mastitis. And in one study, they gave women uh, with mastitis these probiotic supplements and that probiotic supplement not only changed the microbiome of the milk, but it decreased the number of bacteria in the milk, decreased pain for these women who had mastitis, decreased recurrence of mastitis, and importantly, decreased the discontinuation of breastfeeding, which is a good thing because mastitis is one of the main reasons why many women stop breastfeeding prematurely. So in conclusion, we now know that human milk has an inherent microbiome which varies globally and it varies amongst women. And we believe that that microbiome might optimize the infant's microbiome for a particular culture and his or her environment. The origins of these microbes in milk are not definitively known, but we believe that they're coming from the infant's mouth, the environment, and the maternal digestive tract. We know that variation in milk microbiome is related to lots of factors, including geographic location, diet, and childcare. But the important point here is that research is just at the tip of the iceberg here, and there's a lot of additional work to be done to understand what's causing this variation in the milk microbiome, how it impacts maternal and infant health, 
and how we can alter that microbiome to optimize maternal and infant health. And with that, I'd like to thank you and wish you good health in the days to come.